everybody. Welcome to the Tech Raptor Podcast. I'm Robert Scarpanito, your features editor. Andrew Rotten, editor in chief. Robert Stoggett, site founder. Andrew Stretch, the Australian editor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will be talking about Australia today, so we're very excited to have you. First time on the show, right? <laughs> Local Look correspondent in the field, not really. <laughs> Let's put some shrimps on the Barbie yeah. and have a chat. Mm. That's right. Break open your cans of pasta. We couldn't even go a minute <laughs> before, before that, huh? Uh, later on, we're going to talk about some of the games we've been playing, like some Ace Attorney and Outer Wilds. But first, let's get into some news. NFTs are pretty cool, according to Troy Baker. Oh, they're not. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. <laughs> Uh, prolific video game voice actor Troy Baker. You might know him as uh, gruff old dad in uh, Bioshock and in Last of Us. He, he kind of does that a lot now. Um, and his best role ever, Death, uh, you know, Death Stranding. Right, as Higgs? As, I think that's right. <laughs> He's so forgettable, I can't remember his name. Chances yeah, are, right. if you're if you're someone who is pulling up this podcast to listen to it, you either know who Troy Baker is, or if you pull up his IMDb yep. page, you've played at least 50 things that he is in. Mm -hmm. um, yep. He plays the Joker. He does. He did oh, it yeah. in Arkham Origin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, um, you can hate or you can create. Thank Ooh. you, Troy. So the internet picked hate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The internet woke up and picked uh, hate. Don't ever, don't ever give the internet a choice between those two because it's gonna make one. That's, we already yes. know. And they'll actually probably combine them and create hate. <laughs> like, they will create hate. Yeah. They'll do both together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for context, if you've missed the story over the weekend, uh, Troy Baker tweeted out that he is partnering with Voiceverse NFT. Quote, to explore ways where together we might bring new tools to new creators and to make new things and allow everyone a chance to own and invest in the IPs they create. We all have a story to tell. You can hate or you can create. What'll it be? What is the most pretentious douchebaggery <laughs> fucking statement ever to make? Because, like, it's, it's making, like, NFTs or some noble, like, high art, high concept thing, like... It's just go, uh, it's so it's a it's a very odd and a very strong take that's like bursting out yes, the gate yes it is i am i am making nfts and i am proud in a sea of just the ethical issues with nfts before you even get to how much nft artwork is blanket stolen um cash cash grab to make a quick buck it's it's multi-level marketing for 2022. Wait, hold on. Stretch, are you telling me that NFTs are, Wait a minute. are bad? Yes. Huh. Yes, I am. Huh. And I'm not afraid Why? to say it. You can either hate me or you can do <laughs> your research you? and see how horrendous this is. Yeah. Um, it's not surprising. It's like people, not like Troy Baker, other like particularly influencers or whatever, fall into this kind of bullshit all the time. Like, think of all the people that were sponsored by, like, G2A and stuff like that. Like, they, nobody ever looks into anything. Like, oh, you do this thing and I get money for it? Sure. Like, that's kind of as far as it goes. Nobody ever thinks about it. And it's kind of what I feel like happening with NFTs again. Or, like, it's just NFTs and technology. And technology is magic to some people. It's like, oh, we can do this, this, and this. It's like, oh, that I'm convinced. Whether you look into it at all. It's like, oh, obviously technology exists. Therefore, this is good. It will be money. Or whatever bullshit they can well, Everybody throws it. out on the blockchain, decentralized, as if it's this exactly. big deal. And then when your it's shit gets buzzwords. stolen, you fucking bitch about how the fact that it's on the blockchain and decentralized. Like, Is the blockchain an interesting it's... concept? Yes. Can it be used in practical applications? Also, yes. Is it being used properly? Fuck no. No. Um, it, it just yeah. you can you really can do some interesting things with with the blockchain. And there are some coins that do interesting transactional based like tracking or APIs things like that. That those are interesting. And then you have all the shit coins and uh, the board like sheep. Yeah, like sheep that like I don't Doge. know why I keep buying. Um, right, this is this is actually the these sixteen episodes of this podcast 
has been a trap leading to this intervention. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> yeah, I can I can text Troy to take down the tweets now that we got him. We got him. Join, right. join us on episode 17 where we slowly remove all of the Grogu's from behind Rut. And it's just all replaced with bourbon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just... We literally just got an email before we started publishing or started talking that was like, hey, we want to use your Twitter profile picture as an NFT. And then I went and looked at the site and I was like, first of all, what the fuck is this? Second mm -hmm. of all, 0.08 ETH is like $280 and there's no guarantee it's worth that much. And third of all, why would I give up any part of my brand to someone else? Like, okay, what what's the number you would have done it? <laughs> none. Come Everyone on. Everyone has their number <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Come on. That's a lie. You're yeah, lying. So, yourself. so be on the lookout for our profile picture to be an NFT in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> you can own it. It's even, don't even joke about that. $37 million. Dollars. Mm -hmm. You can because own a piece of our brand. me that much money at that point, you know, fuck it. So that's what I mean. There is a number. Yeah. What I think is so wild too about this voice first thing is like even if we divorce the the whole nft because the nft thing is just a huge bag of nonsense right that we can't we can dive into and there's a lot of problems there but <laughs> if you look at what voice verse is trying to do based on that that thread they tweeted like, let me just read a little bit of it voice nfts provide unlimited perpetual access to the underlying ai voice that the nft represents ownership of if you own a voice nft you can create all kinds of voice content and you will own all of the ip so are they saying i can own troy baker as an nft and make him say anything yes. which is a problem yeah <laughs> and that that's like that's the craziest part about it to me is like okay, cool, you're making this super interesting AI that can take, you know, probably a script from a person and develop that into an AI voice that can replicate it. That's pretty cool technology. But then we monetize it and make it really fucking weird. Like, we we have this nice straight line that's like, yeah, this is pretty cool. And then we're just like, what's the worst way, can, worst way we can go? And we go that way. Like, Right. And it's also, also the concept of having a, a modulatable... Um, AI voice that you can use to say different things, perform differently, so on and so forth. I mean, that's the basis of what Vocaloids are based on, and they've been around for years. You can go and see Hatsune Miku air quotes live, but that is a different voice actress who has, has become, who has taken on more and become this personality through the Vocaloid software, through the voice AI software. And just like anything, you know, anything that that NFTs is doing is that they are taking something that ha does exist, is profitable in the way that it currently exists, and slapping a whole bunch of stuff on it to, uh, you know, make it more harmful to the environment, more of a cash grab, more in tune with all of the, the high click buzzwords and stuff. And also, if, if I were Troy Baker, wouldn't i not want this because because like yeah because like after the voice ai of troy baker's created who the fuck needs him for last of us 3 i mean you don't need him for last of us 3 for many reasons but you know like at that point you don't need the actor anymore the actor is obsolete for lack of better word which is like kind of the opposite of wanting to create and tell stories i would think yeah they I mean, eventually when the AIs are good enough, that'd be Yeah, they try to address way. that. Um, the, the company Voiceverse NFT has a has a pinned statement that they, you know, they say in that, you know, we've done a poor job explaining our relationship with all voice actors, um, you know, that, that they fully license and gain explicit written permission from the voice actors to use their voice for the voice NFT. You know, they talk about how the voice actors will get paid up front and then if that voice nft trades hands you know they'll get a portion of that sale that's like you know one of the sweet spots of the the blockchain the the resale of digital goods that that a cut goes back to the original owner um but nowhere in that do they do they really address that idea of of what you are working towards is you know creating a replacement 
um, you know, they say we've received many responses saying that voice NFTs could potentially take jobs away from voice actors. We will change this as we want to, uh, we will change this as we want to disrupt the industry by opening up new streams of opportunity for voice actors, not replacing them. Uh, we want to include all voice actors in the discussion, whether you're a seasoned industry veteran or starting out. But the, the running trend with all of these NFTs, um, as well, the ones that like, there are blockchains that they say are now more eco-friendly. Um, this one is not, but it's a lot of the stuff that I always hear with these NFT scams um, is we're working on doing something better in regards to this, regards to this, regards to this, but they're still trying to take the money. They're still going ahead with the plan. If, if, if you, if they seriously thought that, what they're doing could potentially disrupt voice acting industry as a whole, then the smart thing to do would be to stop, reevaluate, have communication with, with voice actors, with game directors, with, with media directors to find out what is the path that we can have our avenue while not disrupting, but they don't care. And that's, you know, what will be shown, you know, hopefully, luckily, this won't take off. It'll just be another, um, another, you know, another link on the blockchain in a, what is becoming a very oversaturated market. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just, it's just, you're doing nothing. Like, a waste of time and money. Honestly, if I can go a week on Twitter without seeing the word blockchain, <laughs> I'll be so happy. Good luck. The promoted ads will screw you. I know. I've been so tempted to add NFT and blockchain to my Twitter ban list. Um, but just because of, you know, the role I have here, um, you know, always need to be keeping an eye out for the news and stuff. Otherwise, like, you know, my Twitter would have totally missed that all of this shit was going on and we wouldn't be talking about it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, it's just a scary thing. I think. Yeah, I guess is, for, you know, for those out there who are sick of NFTs, Twitter has a really, really robust blacklist system for keywords, key phrases um, that I highly recommend you utilizing. I've Especially if you want to avoid spoilers, you can kind of block out TV shows or stuff like that mm -hmm. that you might be late mm -hmm. to watching. Like it's, it is a super nice tool, and they're uh, very good at, at, you know, it. It also hits promoted ads and stuff like that. So it's not mm. just like stuff on your feed. It's even the nonsense you're probably getting sent as promoted content i, I always have a set like ban anything marvel related in like the two weeks leading up to and the week of a marvel film release just so like i don't want to worry about that like actor name main character actor name main character character name movie name marvel comics yeah mm. you know what nft stands for right? no fucking right, so... thanks go on no, no. That is not what it stands for. What does it stand for, Andrew? It, sta it stands for, this is a fucking scam, don't buy this. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I see. I don't know why they chose NFT to shorten it to, but that's what it stands well, for. Well, because they want people to say nifty. Nifty. It's real nifty. <laughs> yeah. You know what's real nifty? Not buying NFTs. You know what else is nifty? Take-Two dropping $13 billion on Zynga. Damn. Hell of a transition. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy though. Like, how many NFTs do you think they could buy with them? <laughs> I mean, probably one really good one. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But it, uh, take two, famous for uh, I think Grand Theft Auto, a little known indie gem. Um, they have recently bought. Well, last week they bought Zynga, famous for I don't know Farmville, probably, and a lot of other mobile games. Uh, Tons. Of yeah, stuff. for around twelve point seven billion dollars. The next closest... Put that in perspective. That's three times as much as Disney paid for Star Wars. The next yeah. closest deal was uh, Tencent buying Supercell in 2016 for $8.6 billion. Mm. So it's My Lord. nearly $4 billion more than the next largest acquisition. Yeah. I mean, this is... So what we're saying is expect uh, prices to get hiked up in GTA Online. <laughs> Right, what we're saying <laughs> got to pay for this somehow is, uh, wait for the gta online mobile game yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's wild to see this i feel uh in that 
people often forget that Take-Two is a really big deal and that Zynga is a big deal. And that I think there are a lot of core gamers that kind of still turn their nose up at mobile gaming for various reasons. But a mobile gaming giant just made $13 billion. It's, like, it's wild. Like, think of back in 2014 when um, Facebook bought Oculus and Microsoft bought Mojang and everybody's like, holy crap, $2.5 billion. And then this deal just... Or just think of insane. even more recently what they paid for Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, 8.1 billion. billion for uh, Bethesda. Or for Zenimax, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, so basically yeah, yeah. Bethesda. Yeah. But like, this is you know, 50% more than that even. So it's I, it's one of those that I think games media is really, really bad at covering mobile. Because, I mean, for a lot of games media, it's just not as interesting. Because most of them are... They aren't super complex or interesting games usually, so it's kind of hard. They to usually be fall off them after four to, to talk six about hours them. too. Yeah, it's hard to be excited to talk about them, but like, like Zynga is hum- It's 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 huge, and there's a reason why Activision is as big as they are. It's not Call of Duty, like <laughs> it's King. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's crazy how much money. It's they just make. yeah. It's it really is just a. Uh, a, a, a giant wedge of the market that like every now and then like we'll see the <clears throat> yearly reports of oh you know this game made this much through mobile sales or the mobile revenue of video gaming has tripled in the past two years or something and it's just like wow that's a huge metric and then we go back to all of like the eye-popping graphics of whatever the next game is for for um you know playstation series x um that you know it's it's such a like a sleeper field and it's again it's like so oversaturated but even those tiny games um well and when i say tiny i mean like not the the huge hitting stuff but definitely also not like the super niche indie end of it um like as soon as you put some microtransactions in that are even decently affordable that's you know there's a i mean they would have all of the numbers on the back end to say, yeah, buying this for four times what Marvel as an entity was purchased for, that totally makes sense. Marvel is chump change. Like the entire MCU is chump change compared to how much people want to buy new, you know, new costumes to dress up their paper doll girl. Yeah, or not even that. It's like premium currency. Like, just it's a dollar for this thing to like yeah. you know boost whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's just a dollar. Boost whatever, or like get through this thing faster so I can get to the next whatever mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, I don't. And like people, I'm sure everybody's heard like, oh, the game industry, video game industry, it makes much more money or is more valuable than any other entertainment industry, including film. Like, this is why. <laughs> It's the mobile sector that makes this true. Well, it's because no, <laughs> like, no it's movies huge. or TV shows have. Hey, if you want to like, if you want to watch next week's episode right now, pay three bucks. <laughs> well, that or like they don't have instant. Like I have a device on me. Everybody does. That instantly gets me access to billions of people immediately mm-hmm. when it comes out. And if I'm someone like Zynga, you know, I could pay a fuck ton of money and it shows up at the front of the app store or wherever four of the five largest acquisitions are gaming in gaming were mobile development studios yeah zynga yeah, supercell king and moonton and yeah. uh weirdly enough i just came across the fact that churchill downs the uh you know kentucky racing uh horse racing owns big fish games did not oh. know that <laughs> that was a 2014 <laughs> acquisition for 885 huh. million dollars wow the Churchill Downs Incorporated um, Look purchased at them. them. Forward thinkers. Yeah. Bioware, what? that acquisition uh, adjusted for inflation today is $967 million. Wow. So Not a even 12, 10%. Almost... A 12th of what Zynga just sold for. Can, can Take-Two please buy all of the humongous entertainment properties and then just start releasing mobile ports of all of those? That'd be great, thanks. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Strauss Zelnick just heard that and is like, "I'm on it." Stretch. Yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we know that he's an avid listener. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, a fun little aside too in the story is that they had an investor call follow up after the acquisition uh, announced was announced, and uh, the Zynga CEO Frank Gibbo did say that uh, 
you know, they're experimenting and learning about this new tech called NFTs. They are unsure if they will dive into it, but uh, they have faith and belief that the NFT market will be a worthwhile investment. Mm. So it all comes back. It all comes back. And yeah. What's going to be really Probably, frustrating yeah. is that I know that Hazelight Studios was really looking forward to working on their next game, Zynga 2, mm. um, and that they'll have to... Uh, <laughs> change that name now otherwise they'll get sued again <laughs> for, for people that don't know Hazelight made it takes two thank you for explaining the joke <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure well i don't think people know who Hazelight studios are True. i feel like they know joseph ferris so <laughs> that's that's why i was gonna that's why i say hey just so you know you know the fuck the oscars man that guy yeah, yeah. yeah sorry i should have said it that, that, guy. that way <laughs> uh in other news PUBG, uh, that that battle royale game you might have played a couple years ago, uh, just on mobile too. Yeah, that's tr it's also on mobile. It's got it's pretty big presence on mobile. Um, it just went free to play last week, and the day it went free to play, its Steam player count doubled. Yeah, but how many of those are real people? Yeah, could could it's be true. hackers. Well, hey, wait, what are you trying to say? You're saying gamers aren't people? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Spot on. What the hell? We don't exist. Well, they are the most oppressed. Yeah, group. we need to rise up. Oh, man. That's such um, a good video clip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but PUBG is... I don't know. I've always found PUBG to be an interesting thing just because I feel like Fortnite as it is now would not exist without PUBG in a weird way. Uh, yep, you know? It's true. Pu like PUBG is that the OG, man, that people forget mm -hmm. about. Well, because it start kicked off the craze. Because it just, I feel like it didn't really keep up with its competitors, right? Because like no, you know, after that, yeah. you know, we started getting well, we got Fortnite, then we got Apex, right? Like the difference in I them love is that Fortnite because Fortnite was such a dying game, and then it's like you know what that that PUBG game is working out. <laughs> what if we did that? <laughs> Let's just steal that. I think what's what's worked for their competitors though, it's not so much that PUBG didn't change they're still they've added a lot they've done a lot the difference is i can't go back to PUBG because a match takes 45 minutes mm -hmm. like i could hop into fortnite i could hop into apex 15 20 minutes max but PUBG to me these days just feels like a slog i'm um, going to tell you my my secret is that i suck at games mm -hmm. so no matter what battle royale i'm playing it's always a five minute match <laughs> It's really time effective. <laughs> so you're a speed runner in the battle royale get community. In, land in a densely populated area, die, load it up again. Where are we dropping, boys? You know the fastest way to do it? Just don't open your parachute. <laughs> <laughs> Just you're land. Not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Like a, I leave like a wily e. coyote esque like crater in yeah. the ground where I hit. <laughs> you know, maybe you're not into like battle royale games. You just really want them to make a skydiving simulator. Yeah, I'm. I'm so used to. Maybe that's what you want. <laughs> like I really enjoyed pilot wings, but I I wanted to be able to jump. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I feel like going back to your slow comment there. Right? I feel like it's because PUBG is kind of the more realistic of mm -hmm. the of the battle royales right like i mean it's been years since i played it but when i last played it, i remember the quote-unquote funniest thing about it was that you could use a frying pan to hit oh, yeah. people right but then <laughs> apex is like oh you can fly you got a grapple hook robot the frying pan was <laughs> yeah. a legitimate defense as well because it would um you could put it on your back and if yeah. you got shot in the back it would bounce yeah. off the yeah. frying pan yeah yeah that that's neat yeah. i had i had I like 700 well... 600 hours in PUBG before we switched over to fortnite and then mm. bounced off that after yeah. changes, and now we're on hunt. I think this is part of what we've seen a few times, where like we, there's certain games that come along where they don't like PUBG doesn't really have a style to it. It's boring. It looks boring. Mm. There's nothing. Pu PUBG it has opened going for the it. door for the genre. Oh yeah. Um, yep. In the same way that I feel games like the the original mod DayZ like really opened the door as well. Like a lot of people have moved on to these better alternatives. There are also a whole lot, lot of worse alternatives. Um, but them. I think that, yeah, <laughs> that Pub PUBG will always get like remembered as the one that brought the genre. Um, oh yeah. I mean, it is but, still yeah, I think very it's just good. Like, yeah, it's good. Um, it's just, it's, it's early. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
Well, that I, I I really do think there's something to be said about there's there's not a stylistic thing for someone to grab onto. Fortnite has a certain look that people have grabbed onto and like. Apex has a charm to its characters mm-hmm. and stuff. What PUBG has nothing. Mm-hmm. And the style of Fortnite is Thanos doing dances from that's right stolen stolen TV shows. Yeah, and you can yep. play as Chun Li with a gun. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know, like. Yeah, Fortnite, it's the best. For yeah, that. I will say. I do not play Fortnite, but this insane shit that's in there that they're like, should we do this? Yeah, why not? And then they just do it. They saw that, like, this Good is the them. most ambitious crossover ever meme. And we're just like, yeah. yo, hold my hold my pinata. Yeah, yeah, Smash Bros. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will I say, it's... and, and uh, this is the last point I'll make. The Fallout 76 Battle Royale was actually pretty good. The fact that you but, could nuke your opponents was awesome. Yeah, um, I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute there. Hmm. Let that marinate. Rutledge is pretty well known for liking really poorly made and crappy Listen, games. Listen, we went through. I went through a battle royale phase where that was literally all. He still likes talks about radical heights, bro. <laughs> for the two people out there that know what I'm referring to, he still brings Spend it up. Spin to win, man. You just started Spend his machine. Wins. He still brings they, it up. Well, to be fair, there's somebody who's bringing it back. So, um, one yeah, day. Okay. One day. And Rapple it's Zynga too. coming to a mobile phone near you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I could see it. Uh, our last new story for the day, uh, Delta Rune by Toby Fox. You might know him from Undertale. Uh, it has been classified in Australia and then reclassified because of a certain word. Now, I want everyone to sit down, hold on to something. I'm going to say the word, and it's going to be a terrible experience. Don't say it. You you can never take it back. It'll be recorded. I can't take it back, but for the sake of journalism, I have to say it so everyone knows it. Oh, no. It's like being in the classroom when they make you read Mark Twain, and you're like, I don't want to say it. Exactly. But they... they, Australia reclassified it because of the word piss. (laughs) My ears. My poor, sensitive ears. (laughs) Sounds like they're taking the piss. He said it. <sighs> you said it in a joking way. That's unacceptable. This you is said the p word. This is such a weird thing for Australia to do. Australian ratings boards have always been a bit all over the place. Um, that I know. You know, when I when I lived in Australia um, and bought Left 4 Dead 2, I specifically purchased it on the UK version of the Steam store. Because the uh, the Australian version um, was allowed, the Australian version was allowed, and I believe it was like M rated, but that was because they had removed blood, dismemberment, and any of like the the chopped down zombies that you had around you um, would just fade out automatically. And it was such a strange and very specifically targeted. Um, targeted bit of I, I don't even really want to say censorship because it's like not really that I guess yeah censorship but um it's just a weird hill to die on that Australia seems to continue doing for piss to be in it um you know I'm sure it's like in in the context I would hope that it wouldn't be like a character saying I'm gonna go take a piss mm-hmm. um <laughs> or even if something like I'm I, pissed I, off. I hope it is that <laughs> <laughs> Something as benign as that. Hey, I, I, I go take a piss. Don't yeah. piss away your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they haven't revealed like what the new rating is. So I mean it could be maybe they were like, oh, this is X rated, but then they saw piss. We're like, eh, we'll take it down a notch. Now it's just and, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a good thing. And in and in reading our article, uh, I have just now in this. I was today years old when I learned that. It's called Medex in the only in the Australian version of Fallout Three. I one hundred percent completed that game. I did not know that that had originally been called Morphine. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that they renamed Morphine in Fallout Three to Medex. Um, so I mean, I I, that was Boy, just think of all the, something that I grew Australian up with. Australian brain, what you don't know. It seems like a lot of. Uh, Australia did have a really, well, it still has a really large drug problem. Um, why they're deciding to take that out in video games? 
Oh, that explains. You, you moved to Florida, so you feel like home. Nice. Oh, I mean, if there's, anywhere, <laughs> if there's anywhere that makes me feel more at home in America, like Australia, it's it's Florida. I mean, it's got to be Florida. <laughs> uh, we love, we remember, love you, Florida. Yeah, I just remember we published hey. an article years back about a game that had, like, uh, pill shapes in it that the developer had to take out to get through uh australian ratings boards was it dr yeah. mario <laughs> that, that'd be great no it's actually yeah there's all kinds of weird stuff they do it's actually they wouldn't allow dr mario because um he didn't have enough contact hours he needed more to be certified <laughs> correctly in australia so they had to uh they had to put dr mario through three more years of schooling yeah. before he was allowed to release in australia well, I think they released the earlier version. They just called him Mr. Mario. <laughs> I did not go to six years of a medical school to be called a mister. <laughs> That's a better game. <laughs> Do Dr. Mario trying to practice as a doctor, but the government won't allow yeah. him. And if Mr. Mario is game. just like Googling <laughs> symptoms on WebMD, it's like, oh, you're going to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> What would you like yeah, me to says, tell you next of kin? Since you have <laughs> 10 types of cancer. By day, it's the normal Dr. Mario gameplay. By night, it's like <laughs> medical questions. Like it's an exam that you have to take in the, the game. He just goes and hangs out in like the back of a vet. <laughs> He's just hallucinating off his fucking this is a close mind enough. on mushrooms the whole time. <laughs> I've done so many experiments on the Goombas. Oh no. <laughs> Let me just eat some more mushrooms so I can... <laughs> <laughs> They're performance-enhancing drugs for him. <laughs> yeah. They're his medex. Yoshi, some uh, I actually, science experiment I, gone wrong. I read the rest of that sentence. Because, um, <laughs> like, you know, me being a, a good, well-researched person, I read the second half of that sentence, and that medex change was carried out worldwide. So it was because of Australia... That it became medex everywhere, but it was originally going to be morphine. Interesting. So I'd, I'd like to state a retraction for what I said about uh, two minutes ago. My bad. Um, I'm a changed person now. I hope that we can all move forward with this um, and put the past behind us. Thank you very much. You're just doing it so Don doesn't yell at you. <laughs> I am so He'll proud. Of you. He will. He will get to that point. Pause the podcast. Yell at me, and then <laughs> and then keep listening. <laughs> Wait, we are like live subtweeting right now. That's what's happening. It's, there's always one person every podcast that we we subcast sub pod sub sub pod sub pod oh. sub pod. That sounds well. Never okay. mind. I won't go there. All right. Next. Next. Yeah. Let's let's cl let's close the chapter here and move on. Uh, let's talk about some of the games we've been playing. Otten, what do you got? Uh, well, the main thing I've been playing, I cannot, I can't, I don't know if I, I don't know, I didn't read the NDA that closely, so I, I'm not going to tell you whether what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I've been playing a bunch of that, so that, that'll be on next week's podcast, I can talk about it. Super interesting game, thank you. So, it is very, it's very, people will be excited for it. Nobody on this podcast is going to care about it, but I'm going to talk about okay. it. Anyway. So other than that, I talked a little bit about Tales of Arise last week. Zoogles. I've been continuing to play it. <laughs> Fucking Zoogles. Every time I see Zoogles, <laughs> every time I'm just like, what the fuck? And like they find out, like, you know, Zoogles aren't from this world. And you're like, fuck off. <laughs> like, I don't need an explanation for why these, they're, they're monsters. Like, piss off. Anyway. It's because the Zoogles are actually Mumbaloos from a different dimension that got transformed I, as know, they went through... The you don't want to space Japan, way. I believe it. It's a JRPG, so that's there's that's kind of weird shit can be in there. Crystals. <laughs> yeah, that you know what crystals have not come up. Well, actually, you collect crystals. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, you mean the the main five things? I don't know if I would call them crystals. I don't think those are crystals. Yeah. I well, I but, mean they're crystal substitutes. Yeah, they're MacGuffins. Real. They're crystals. Well, aside anyway. from aside from the Zoom bulbs. Um, How's how's the yeah, game been going levels. now that you've put some more time into so it? So I've played more of it. Uh, I think we slept on this game for uh, visual design. Hey, I didn't. By the way, that was it's beautiful. Like when I get to what's it, Vicent or Vis? However they say, Vicent. The, the big city snow. and the like. 
No, no, no. The the next world, the like green uh, greeny world. Mm-hmm. That city's the green hill zone. Cool as hell looking. That's right. Usually, you know, that's like the first world. This they they're switching it up on us. Instead of snow world and stuff, it's the green world's the third world instead of the first mm-hmm. one. Have you had you an know, underwater fire world's level usually yet. the last? <laughs> Not yet. It's coming. I can. It feel is it. coming. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> it, is, it is coming. <laughs> oh no! Uh, what else? So... No, no, you've got so the green world. You've got the ice world. You've got to have yep. the the underwater level. For some yep. reason, games will inexplicably have a music level. Is there a music level in it? Uh, no. You know what? I just recruited a character who's way into music. So if there's some music related thing, I would not be surprised. Okay, I look forward to hearing about that next week. On our routine segment think... of Otten pl- talks about Zumbles. I don't think it'll be as good as, you know, the music uh, s- stuff in Kingdom Hearts, but nothing is. It's true. Uh, Not even Guitar I mean, Hero. They made a whole game out of it. Guitar what? Guitar Hero? What's that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a Kingdom Hearts spinoff. Next week, it's going to be purchased yeah. by Take-Two or Embracer Group. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, Tales of Arise, like, it's... Uh, I, I don't know how much I who cares about spoiling it. So the like second ice world thing where it's the guys like the, you're helping some rebel group take down the leader of this area, this the lord. And I looked at this guy and then the lord showed up. I'm like, that's the same fucking dude. <laughs> like and nobody's recognizing it in the game. I'm like, is this am I insane or is that not the same guy? And then like there's a reveal later like, "Aha, I tricked you." I am the Lord the whole time. And you're like, I was like, no, <laughs> like you just, that your disguise was as bad as Clark Kent, man. Like I knew who you fucking were I, the whole time. I mean, like it was this serious moment. That's what, that's what annoys me a little bit sometimes wait, about it is like, you're, it's trying to be serious with you're this You're talking about Clark Kent, Clark Kent, that guy with glasses? It, to be fair, yeah. his disguise yeah. has worked for a century. So <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I was like, huh, what am I looking at here? I was like, that's the same fucking dude. Um, and that that was like all right. I'm not a fan of that one because <laughs> I'm I'm all for ridiculousness if if they they're playing it that way, but they're not. <laughs> it's ser- It's a serious game. Yeah, <laughs> it's trying to be serious. The next world though, that that story I got a little more into. I thought that was pretty neat. So hopefully it's more like that because uh, that last one I was like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, with that nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like I said last week. How the first world that you're playing through, it's like very on the nose with its like class warfare oh, yeah. uh, storytelling. Not not subtle at no, all. No, but I think now that you're getting into the third world and beyond, like it, it's starting to get more into the nuances of it and like how much further that stuff can be exploited by those in power. And yeah, so we'll yeah. we'll see how it goes. I'm in the medieval world looking now. Mm, the fourth one. That's right? what it looks like. Yep. Yeah. Castle Town or whatever the shit. Yeah. You're you're blazing through that game. Pun pun intended, I guess. The blazing sword. How is that a pun? Uh, oh. There's a blazing sword in the game. I was just like, what? Tales of Arise blazing through what? <laughs> it's like I'm missing something. Yeah. You... Inside joke. Yeah. Apparently I'm not cool enough. <laughs> you gotta know we gotta your Zoogle knowledge isn't high yeah. enough. Oh no. You have to capture a certain number of Zoogles. Mm-hmm. Gotta catch them all. Tales of Arise. That's that's the famous right. tagline. Oh no, no, that game comes out in two weeks. Stretch. Yeah. Oh, uh, true, true, true. Yeah. Uh, Rut, what have you been playing? Pretty much a lot of the same. Uh, I picked up God of Boy this morning. Uh, nice. Started playing that, so I'm looking forward to getting through it. Um, PC. PC. That's still yep. my favorite. Uh, my favorite like subtitle we've done for a review. God of the Boy. God of Boy. Or- no, it was God of War. What was it? A, a ma- the, the oh, story the, of the Mad Dad, Mad and the Dad, sad and lad. sad lad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to link that in the in the description. But yeah, I'm I've been playing a bit of that this morning. I'm not too far in, but tried out Spelunky for the first time the other day, um, and I fucking suck. Uh, mm. I just what? get Spelunky yeeted one or two. over and over and over. It's just it's not. I'm not good. Um, so I feel I feel bad for my co-op partner that we the playing. the first one or the second one the second one right okay yeah yeah so yeah, have you ever played the first hard. one either I have not played the first one either wow it's not That's really my wild. genre um hmm. well, but it's just been around for so long it's so surprising you haven't tried it at some point yeah I mean I haven't played it either but I know 
it's impact. Yeah, but you haven't played like all kinds of shit. It's true. Yeah, yeah. You play Ocarina of Time, I don't think. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. That's still <clears throat> baffling. Yeah, that sits wrong with me. <laughs> I mean, other than that, I'm still I'm still on Hunt, where we play that almost every night. It's just it's such a a solid experience. Um, that it's it's been hard to put down as like a multiplayer. Experience. Why do you think people are talking about it more? I don't hear it mentioned. It's not a big. Uh... It's got a pretty <laughs> solid players player base. Um, That's the thing too. It seems like it does, but like I don't ever see it talked about anywhere. I think a lot of it comes down to it is it is very much a hardcore game. Um, it's not kind of well. You I loser. mean, in terms of in terms it's of not for you know to, you normal people. Yeah, you normies. Uh, I mean, well, compared to a lot of what's out there, it's it's got a lot more it's, nuance. It's the Dark to Souls it. of Battle Royale. <laughs> Rhett's not a banal person. He plays not the real all. video games. Not it's not all. like other games. Yeah, it's just it's a harder one to get into. I think there's just a lot more to it um, rather than it just being purely a shooter. There's a lot of uh, a lot of tactics to it within everything. You know, avoiding birds, trying to be quiet, um, taking down things silently, and and hopefully jumping or third partying other people. Um, you know, that, and some people are very good. There are definitely points, even for me, 700 hours in, that I'm like, how the hell is that person so good? Or how did they shoot me from halfway across the map? But um, it, it is a, a difficult game, I think, that it may just be a barrier of entry type thing where people get intimidated by it. Um, but but once you get into it and, and you start to understand the meta and, and a lot of what's at your fingertips, um, it is it is a very fun game. Um, do they do they add much stuff to it? I know that like you know the whole point is that you go in and there's gonna be a monster somewhere on the map and stuff. And I'm like I know that there's a large spider. Yeah, so there's a there's a spider boss which fuck that boss um, scares the ever living shit out of me. Um, mm-hmm. There's butcher which is a big boy that like basically throws fire at you and and can hurt you pretty bad if he swings. And then they added the third boss was. I think the assassin, which is basically just a monster made up of roaches, oh, um, that just like basically disappears. You can't hit him until he pops up to stab you. Um, he's easily one of the hardest ones to take down quietly. Um, and then they added Scrap Beak, which he basically throws concertina bombs, which is just Ooh. barbed wire. Mm. Um, and then they've added pretty regular guns. They do events, so I think they just okay. we just wrapped up the winter event, which basically. Their events are themed um, to where, I don't remember, whatever the fall event was, it was kind of like Indian themed, um, which kind of racist, but um, where you would go around um, taking out like, I don't like little totems and stuff. Like you smash them, it gives you points towards the quote unquote battle pass, which is free. And then you mm. unlock guns, you unlock um skins and then you unlock like characters the winter one was like presents and christmas trees um and so they're they're doing a lot to just continually add things but it's only three maps right now and and four bosses so it can get repetitive Um, i feel like i mean as as much as like everyone and their mother does this now in their games i feel like hunt would be another one that would really um that would really like go well with some like good ip partnerships like in the same way that like dead by daylight has to kind of limit themselves to more like humanoid creatures i feel like if uh like if hunt showdown got like the big tentacly demogorgon from like the end of stranger things season two and like you know kind of go for like those more monstrous horror movies like a stay puff marshmallow man Mm. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's definitely some interesting collabs they could do um, although I will say the spider has stockings during Christmas and that actually cracks me up like, that's just adorable like, just like stockings all the way up you know um, if they use uh, Shelob from you know Shadow War it could be a different kind of stockings but ah. the lore behind Hunt is, is kind of fucked up too like like really, like one of them is a hive um and what it does is if it sees you, it like it sends like a swarm of bees at you essentially mm-hmm. that poison you. But apparently, um, hives are zombies that were pregnant girls. And this second head that is popping out of their back what? is the baby. Creepy. And so it's just like a really, really dark, dark, dark lore. 
um, that I've started like actually reading into, and I'm like, man, some of this stuff is this is crazy. So 700 you know, hours. I think it's like finally reading the lore. You think they're like I'm in it to murder, <laughs> like, man. Like obligated <laughs> these dark games, they've all got a, like a guy named the Butcher. Yes. And, you know that? Like, what's up with that? Like, oh, it's the butcher. What's he do? Oh, he's a big guy with like a cleaver. Oh, okay. And he butchers. Things. Where, where are the baker and the candlestick maker getting their representation yeah. in video games? I feel like we just don't get enough. Yeah, they, their unions just aren't strong enough. They don't have. Where a, are my Shrek voice. games? Yeah, it's big butcher. It's Hunt Showdown. It's Hunt Showdown. Yeah. yeah. True. It's true. your there Shrek is, game. Shrek's house <laughs> is in Shrek's Hunt house Showdown. Is there. <laughs> I have been there. Um, there is a very tiny horse. <laughs> you mean donkey? Yes, but it, that would, it's literally that would just donkey. a horse model shrunk down. <laughs> Did you say Don Quixote or donkey? Donkey. Donkey. Uh, that donkey. would be that would be the ultimate, you know, you're like creeping through Hunt Showdown and then you Which... just quietly hear Smash Mouth getting louder and louder. <laughs> and he God, kicks down the door. More scary? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a more frightening game. <laughs> That's the ultimate horror experience. Uh, uh, get out, Miss Swamp. <laughs> Hey, Stretch, what have you been playing besides Shrek Simulator? So, um, I did what you're never meant to do, and I watched a video game adaptation in movie form. The Ace Attorney, the Japanese Ace Attorney live action movie is so good. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? There's a live action Ace there, Attorney? Yeah, there is a live action Ace Attorney movie, and they go full ham with the effects with framing the shots to mimic the games um oh my god you know where you would like in in the game have like an image of the of the um like evidence evidence. like in front of your screen they're in like a futuristic courtroom that has um that has like hologram projectors everywhere so they're like slap their desk and like like iron man style with his um with his like hard light uh, holograms will like lift up an image and push it out to be like above the audience. Um, they'll even do like the big like tonal shifts in characters and stuff. So where you're playing the game and you're like, objection, this is where this doesn't make sense. You know, you start that, sweating profusely. <laughs> yeah. The character that looks normal will start sweating profusely or they'll like, rip the rip the wig off their head and start screaming or they'll pull a bullhorn out of nowhere and start like screaming at everyone um and it's really fantastic um but because of that and i have not played a ace attorney game ever um i finally decided to pick up the original trilogy on xbox uh and i'm only like two cases into it because i've been playing another game as well that i'll be talking about next week um but games are fun yeah definitely like you know i have to like be in a be in a like a mood to play them um but they're fun the the, the the first one is pretty rough <laughs> compared to some others it, it has some of the best story though i think the fifth case in the first game is still one of the best ace attorney i, I have i have another friend who's a huge ace attorney fan and has always been trying to get me to play him and uh and he's just like consistently saying like Fifth case is so good. Fifth case is so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, that one was didn't come out originally. It came out when they when it re released on the DS, uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah so so like, this this live action movie as well, it like cherry picks information. It seems to like mostly focus on like the second and fourth case, but then they also like mix up stuff with the the first and third case as well. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like I might know like what the point A of the story is and where the conclusion of the story is. But the journey getting there has been pretty different um, across the two. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put Ace Attorney on our doc, I thought you had just picked up the games for fun. I didn't realize that the movie would be the (laughs) thing that kicked it off, and I'm so happy it was, because that movie is just... (laughs) It's so... lean so hard into, like, we know this is goofy. But people want this to be goofy. We don't want a serious, like, law drama. Mm-hmm. Um, that if you're an Ace Attorney fan and you have nothing better to do and can find where to to get this Ace Attorney Japanese live-action film, um, 
definitely worth a watch. Way better than some of the other horrendous video game movie or anime movie adaptations. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend the anime, though. The anime is, I mean, it's all right, but it is a straight up adaptation of the games. So, like, you're already playing the games anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What have you Um, been playing, Scrappy? So... I've been playing um, this this little gem from 2019 called The Outer Wilds. I know you might. Oh, not I love Outer Worlds. Such yeah, Outer good Worlds game. is yeah, good Outer shooting. Wor- maybe. Yeah, it's just I'm so glad Outer Worlds is overrated. Yeah, I'm so glad Bethesda finally made Fallout, Fallout in space. <laughs> uh, no, so Outer Wilds, um, the indie game, right, where you explore the into solar the system. wilds. Yeah. the indie game. Yeah, the musical. <laughs> 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 Uh, Outer Wilds, because they they had that DLC late last year, right? Which I haven't played. Uh, I've just been playing the base game because it's back on Game Pass. And I'm like, okay, let's give this a chance. Because I did give it a shot a few years ago. And I I bounced off it pretty hard because I just, like, could not wrap my head around the space-faring mechanic, like how you maneuver And I think you have to have a a mood for it because it's, like, it's a very particular kind of game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very – it's a slow burn. It's – I – kind of think of it like mist in space because it's yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah. because all you're doing like it's one of those games where if you know exactly what to do you can beat the game like in 20 minutes or whatever you know because like it there's only one way to beat it but there are a ton of other things to explore and what you explore is how you learn how to beat it you know like you you see these uh these notes that people from the past have left and they kind of like point you in a direction where like, oh, I found this thing on that planet and like I need to go check it out, which is your clue to like, okay, now I need to go to that planet and check it out, right? It's one of those things. I'm pretty close to the end and I don't know if I'm going to finish it because what? <laughs> because I'm anglerfish freak me the fuck out. <laughs> 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 And I, you know, no, no big spoilers, but they, they freak me enough out where I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I am, wow. I'm done. I, I'm good. You know? But I mean, but yes, yeah. It's up to that point though. That's really the game. Yes. Is, it's exploration and figuring and piece and stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I've been really enjoying about it is like, cause I've been in that mood now where it's like, I want something that's kind of a slow burn where you learn everything. And I think it's, it's so cleverly designed like that, that, um, little computer in your ship, I think is so fantastic, right? Like, yep. cause it, it tracks every, um, every major discovery you make. So even if you like played it on a Monday and then haven't played it and then you boot it up on Friday, all you need to do is like look through your computer real quick and you'll know like, Oh, okay. Now I know what I want to do next. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played a game that is like better at capturing like like a sense of like wonder like holy shit like I don't I, it's cuz you you are just piecing stuff together like you're you're flying around to these different little planets not even planets some of them are just like just little land masses mm-hmm. and figuring out information about ancient civilization that's pointing like you said pointing you in a certain way as you learn certain things and we there like exploration is a part of a lot of games. I'm putting that in quotes because really exploration is run around until you find the guy that has the quest. Yeah, or whatever. Uh, and that that making exploration that big of a deal in Outer Wilds is so they do it so well. Like that's the main driving thing is you want to go out there with no real direction. Like you can, you can go anywhere at any time. Like you don't have to follow what they tell you. you just go you screw can, around. You can hurdle yourself into the sun if you want yeah do whatever it sounds fantastic <clears throat> yeah it's it's great that's always there's a, a reason i think a few places gave it like it was a game of the year for quite a few places that year oh yeah there's a special kind of feeling you get in games where you're like invested in the story but you're learning everything at the same time that like the main character is um and i've only played like the first 30 minutes so i'm not sure how much the the main character really has a personality or anything um mm-hmm in outer wilds or if it's just very like blank i'd say it's very blank because you're yeah. you're pretty much just learning about the the ga- not the galaxy just the solar system really yeah mm-hmm. and like how everything works and how everything communicates and stuff 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I love those feelings of like, you know, that, that moment where you do really feel in sync with your character to be like, oh, this is what's going on. Or yeah. like, this is what we need to do next. Yeah. yeah. And there's just so much about the game that's just so charmingly clever and inventive, you know, like, oh yeah. So the, the, the solar system's on a timer. So the first planet is called the hourglass twins and it's a planet it's like a duo planet where they're spinning around each other and one is mainly sand and the other has like this big just like like it's hollowed out around the equator so that entire loop is you can watch the sand go from one planet to the other and when it is done that's your cue like okay the loop's about to be over like, huh. it's so yeah. inventive and clever. that is really neat yeah and, and that's not even like if that's interesting to you like there's so like <laughs> all the planets like have something going on that's really cool and there are even more interesting things that aren't even the planets yeah yeah and each loop is only like 20 minutes you said 22 i think i think it's okay. 22 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so and and the way that the loops end it's it's really good like it's just yeah it's probably the first time it's very overwhelming you're like oh shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you haven't seen it you're like oh my god right but then every time after that there's something just like so like when the music kicks in because because it, it plays yeah. a musical cue so that way like no matter where you are you know okay you only have like a minute or two left right um and there are times where you're just exploring and the music kicks on and you're like oh guess it's time and there are other times where you're yeah. like trying to read a thing and the music kicks in and you're like fuck i gotta read gotta read so fast you know <laughs> i gotta get through yeah. this now <laughs> there's there's nothing I love more in games than uh, when you uh, you have a certain aha moment or uh, like where you figure something out or piece something together and it's not the game like hand holding you to this like let me piece everything together for you so that you can then realize what's going on but when you're actively having to figure it out I think I don't know I don't know if there's a better a better uh, feeling that developers can evoke out of somebody than making someone have that on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so good. I think we talked and about that a little bit with so well. too. How the the act of figuring out the loop would have been a lot more substantial if it hadn't handed it to you. Yeah, I think that's it's sort of similar in that, but I think Outer Wilds it doesn't like there's no map markers. Or at least you you can turn them on at certain points, but you know it's not like you picked up a note and then a thing shows up in your HUD to be like, oh, exactly right here, you know. Yeah, it's, you're just figuring stuff out. Like, it's something that can make that compelling instead of overwhelming. Because I think that that's a that's a really hard line to figure out. Because it could be just be like, oh my god, this is going to be so much work, rather than yeah making a, a fun mystery to unsolve on un, you know unravel, mm -hmm. like they do that really well yeah like there have just been so many moments for me where i'm like just mind blown like there's a puzzle that's dependent on whether your flashlight is on or off and when you figure that one out it's like this is a cool this is a very smart cool good game yeah. you know it's... did you ever play the witness no yeah people didn't okay so i love the witness yeah because did all kinds of neat stuff yeah the witness I mean, like in your in your in the way that you've been describing some of like the small puzzles and how things escalate and how different things like can can shift things. Um, the witness did that really well. It it's a game about moving a dot through a puzzle, mm -hmm. but then they begin to add more and more and more elements on that. Like, oh, you know, now you need to like make it so that the line from point A to point B puts all of the black dots on one side and all of the white dots on the other side. And then it's like figuring out how to do that. Um, but I think that um, if you, I mean, when you're done with Outer Wilds, if you like the idea of like progressive and like gradually increasing uh, interesting puzzles and stuff, um, The Witness does puzzles yeah. excellently. The Witness is definitely way more puzzle heavy yeah. where like the Outer yeah. Wilds is like you're it's a lot of reading and you're like it's learning about this civil like the story of what mm -hmm. came before. But The Witness is definitely it's what I was thinking of also with, with Outer Wilds where it's it's got a similar vibe where it just sits you in this place, figure the shit out like <laughs> dude you're going to do go find this puzzle, make your way around this world. Mm -hmm. Um too bad Jonathan Blow's real pretentious butthole, but yeah. yeah. The Witness That's is pretty a shame. great. 
<laughs> the witness is good. Well, it's like my, my it's like in terms of like puzzle games, my my two favorite are the witness and Fez. <laughs> mm, that's a shame. That kind of and I'm, and I'm just like, well, this is... <laughs> apparently bad people make really good puzzle games for me. <laughs> I I think. It... Because I've seen The Witness around before. I think what turned me off to it is that it looks so much like a puzzle game. Because most of the way you interact with it is like you wander to the island and then and then a dot matrix shows up. Oh, right? yeah. And then, like, you, and then you zoom into the puzzle. It's a yeah. ton of those puzzles. Right. It's a lot. So many fucking puzzles. Whereas Outer Wilds is more like you go to this planet, you read a thing, and then it tells you, oh, there's like this secret hidden base on that planet that has more information <laughs> for you. Check it out. Right. So like there, there are aren't really like put the pieces together correctly kind of puzzles yeah. i mean there are a few but like that's not the main interactive it's like a thing it's like uh one of those movies like national treasure mm -hmm. like follow the breadcrumb style. i think the witness for people that liked outer wilds is worth giving a shot i mean if you like you it's definitely more if you like puzzles but what's cool about it too is there's those puzzles but there are definitely more out of the box thinking puzzles that do not involve the dots at all where, like the island itself is a puzzle mm, okay like it's there's many layers of shit going on in that game uh ignore the very pretentious stuff like when the videos start playing just don't watch them <laughs> yeah. they're, they're so far up their own ass they get really up just themselves. get just get move on <laughs> <laughs> um Auden, when you played the witness did you find the developer room i don't think so very early on i think it's at the very beginning of the game where there's like a a pole with light showing that's like you know when you're new playing the game it's like oh well this is quite obviously you know this shows that this has power that's why this laser grid is up yeah so the very first puzzle you do is switching off that laser grid but if you walk up to that pole and position the pole so that the sun is behind it and then interact with the sun the sun begins as a point and then you draw the line down and it like takes you to a series of rooms that lead you to clouds above the island and then you walk through um like a like a 3d photogrammetry like 3d model of the developer's office what the fuck? that sounds so pretentious <laughs> like it's, it's actually it's I pretty cool <laughs> i'll say that with the witness that fits that sounds pretty fucking rad actually yeah so I it's could... just like you know it's it's kind of like the same idea of like the the far cry ending that you can like get at the very beginning of the yeah, game yeah yeah you can just walk pa past a full perfect representation of the developer's studios and like you know no that's stills really cool, of them in 3d space as they yeah. were working on the game that's kind of neat i mean because the witness is like because when i first was playing it it just does it definitely seems like okay i'm just doing this fucking dot thing over and over and over and over and over for over. infinity <laughs> uh, and, and they do get interesting like there's a lot of mechanics to it. it's it's definitely taking a simple idea and running with it as mm -hmm. far as you can it does that super well mm. um but like you do start to realize oh there's like i should pay attention to how where things are pointing in this island just objects or like this is set up in an inter a specific way everything is a puzzle Every, everything ties Literally. into something you'll realize like everything matters mm. it's it's i've never had a game where it's just like you're walking around like oh my god i have to remember everything like <laughs> one of, but it, it's one so, of those pen uh, it's and so paper satisfying kind of books it's it's so satisfying because when you figure something out and it works or you try something and it pans out it's so good mm. if you're a puzzle person like i can't think of a better game for puzzle people than the witness it's just it's so it's got a lot going on yeah, that's fair. Anyway, uh, sorry to derail Outer <laughs> Wilds, but The Witness. <laughs> no, uh, I usually I don't see people talking about The Witness, and it's a beautiful game too. I love the look of it. Mm. I think Witness is great. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a try if I'm like in more of a puzzle mood. I think because for now, I think I'm just I'm gonna shelf Outer Wilds because like I'm at the point where the last thing I need to do is is <laughs> is anglerfish, and I'm just <laughs> I am. <laughs> I, like I watched a speed run of the game last night, so I like know how it ends. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good. All right, well, at least you know <laughs> this is a good game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think can't get past the anglerfish boss. Dude, it's that <laughs> and spiders, man. I mean, like, spiders, I'm kind of cool with because usually you're killing them in the games. You're not doing that in this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'll say. 
Uh, but I think that wraps it up for this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please feel free to leave a review on iTunes. That would help us out a lot. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, you know, a thumbs up or leave a comment below and let us know what have you been playing in these this early part of 2022 as we're leading up to one of the most monstrous Februarys I've seen in a while. Oh, God. Yeah. February. Right. February. We're, we're, we might die. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. You might be listening to one of the last episodes of the podcast ever. Yeah. You know, we all got our 500 hours of Dying Light 2 we got to do. Not, right. So. <laughs> yeah. As, so, as the person running our guides, I, I don't know if I'll make it through February. Yeah. Well, let's make a pact right now, guys. When Dying Light 2 comes out, we just go into our holes for six months. Right. We just hide, hibernate, and play it for 500 hours. For 500 and then we, hours. Re we re emerge. COVID will be over, probably. And, and uh, we talk about Dying Light 2. Mutant people will have, you know, taken over the earth. Mm -hmm. All um, those COVID vaccines, we were tricked, turns out. <laughs> they got them. No. Oh, no. Get vaccinated. <laughs> he brought the no. persona back. He brought it back. Oh, no. Uh, I'm saying Q can't be right wrong about everything. Uh, I'm saying. Sure, yeah. You know, a, <laughs> a blind squirrel's right twice a day or whatever, right? Uh, um, if you want more of us, uh, we publish news, reviews, and features every day of the week at techraptor.net, so you can check us out there. Or if you want the podcast, we'll be back in your feed next week. We'll see you then.